All right, everybody. I got Dave at No Carb Life back on the channel again, uh, which is kind of funny because we just did another video, but we're just <laughs> doing two in a row here just to keep the content going. Uh, Dave is trying to reach 1 billion subscribers by end of month. So please subscribe to his channel again because I just recorded this video after the last one. I've completely lost my voice. But we have Mike the Vegan here going to debunk Dr. Anthony Shafee. He released this just a couple of days ago. I, have you heard of this guy, uh, Dave? Mike the Vegan? No, first time. I, I've seen him come up occasionally in my feed, but I've never watched any of his videos. Yeah. Well, let's start by giving him a thumbs down. How about that? <laughs> okay. Hey, plants are trying to kill you, debunked. Yes, I'm going to be responding directly to a YouTube video presentation on the channel Low Carb Down Under, which came out late last year, a few months back, and a few of you have messaged me about it, wanting me to respond, and it's approaching half a million views, so I gotta get in there. Yes, it appears that killer cabbages could be coming for you. Murder mangoes, sassafras assassins, deadly dill pickles, assault soy, killer kohlrabi. The presentation is by carnivore doctor Andrew Chafee, and we'll even cover some of his anti-vegan claims on- You got his name wrong. <laughs> Andrew Chafee. Insta briefly. You see that the presentation focuses on scare tactics around phytochemicals while completely ignoring oh, there the- there we go, Dave. Phytochemicals. Phytochemicals. Yay. You have to have those you essential- mention. The essential phytochemicals in your, in your yeah. diet. <laughs> Massive body of research on actual human health outcomes from those phytochemicals. Brussels sprouts alone had over 136 identified human carcinogens in them. And even in several cases, he's trying to scare you about a plant and a health condition when that exact plant and its particular phytochemical he's talking about is actually shown to be beneficial or associated with less of that disease. It's crazy. Anyway, this is like a. Th uh, so, so what? Mike the vegan's trying to say here is like it, what you're doing by having these phytochemicals or whatever which which are actually kind of bad for you is that if you have little bits um at a time then it's supposed to build up your immunity or make your body harder or something like that is that what he's going to say to us yeah they they always talk about that um hormetic effect of, of eating uh, plant foods or whatever yeah and, you know um i mean they can't really deny that there's anti-nutrients in them which are harmful for human health mm. um but he's going based on the hierarchy of evidence which again is just complete bullshit it's just pseudoscience there's no science scientific uh, evaluation any of these studies are just observational epidemiology and you're just relying on more and more garbage this junk pile of observational studies, which is all you could have in nutrition science. It's not a science, right? So it's uh, it's just about, you know, they talk about antioxidants and phytochemicals. I mean, those are used to protect the plant. They're not used for it to benefit your health. Right. Right. They're, yes, exactly. They're used for the plant health. They're not used for human health. <laughs> <laughs> 30 minute presentation, so I'll try to hit everything, let's go. And I will say he starts out with a premise that is valid, that plants are trying to survive and they do create defense chemicals. He just really puts in the fear mongering from there. And while- And they do, right? Cause like lectins and oxalates and stuff like that. I mean, these are chemicals are, are you know, people tolerate them. They're not good for anyone. If you have leaky gut, you're gonna have severe effects from these these uh, chemicals that these plants produce. So oxalates, I mean, they cause all sorts of disease states. And this is proven. You know, we've seen in animal-based studies it causes breast cancer. We've seen it proven that they uh, cause uh, pelvic pain conditions, all sorts of inflammatory pain, pain conditions. Kidney stones, I mean, that's not debatable. Mm. You know, well, sorry, there's one study showing that oxalates actually help kidney stones. But what are calcium oxalate uh, kidney stones produced from oxalate and the science shows that calcium binds to oxalate to remove it from the body because it's it because it's it's poisonous so you have to detox these oxalates right so this the science is complete nonsense i mean it's just there's no it's not science it, it drives me nuts yeah
animals can run away or fight back. Plants can't, and so they use a lot of different things, but poison is one of their main deterrents. They use these defense chemicals. And yeah, that's true. A ton of plants create these chemicals. I mean, we've got poison ivy to poison hemlock. And his premise is, hey, even if it doesn't kill you, it could be harming you. We'll investigate that, he continues. Again, just, just botany biology 101. I literally learned this in seventh grade that plants and animals are in an evolutionary arms race. Plants becoming more and more poisonous so less and less animals can eat them so that they can survive and thrive. Here's the thing though, through human ingenuity, cultures over thousands of years have been winning that evolutionary arms race. I mean, we have things like cooking that no other animal has. People have bred foods to have lower content of these. Heck, sometimes these defense chemicals even benefit us. I mean, that's what antioxidants are. So in that sense, we've adapted to eating a lot of yeah, those antioxidants aren't for our benefit. <laughs> but <laughs> what he's basically saying is that these foods are toxic. But over time, because we've learned to cook them in certain ways and, you know, prepare them in certain ways, that they're not as toxic as they used to be. So we're winning that arms race. So they are toxic. But, it's just the way they're being eaten now. But it would be much simpler just to not eat them. Yeah. Rather than you know, modifying them or washing them or boiling them or something. Why don't we just not eat them? Yeah. If they were meant to be eaten, they should be, they were, they should be meant to be eaten raw. Mm. You know, mm. I mean, meat could be eaten raw, of course. Yeah. Right? Some, uh, some vegetables can be eaten raw. Many can't, but mm. uh, for me to be able to handle vegetables and most people I speak to, they have to boil the fuck out of them or pressure mm. cook them especially if they can take lectins, which are super inflammatory or oxalates, you know, you have to sprout them, you have to boil them, you have to heat them up to high degrees. So should we be eating them? I don't know. I can't say that they're going to kill you. I, you know, I, they're obviously not insanely toxic. Otherwise we'd be dropping like flies, but should we be eating them? Most of these plants, not so sure about that. Mm plants you know those mustard greens as they're being chewed by a cat like should we be eating these leafy green vegetables mm. what do you what's your thought on that like does this look like food to you no it doesn't resemble food at all as far as i'm concerned you know like before before i went on the carnivore diet i would you know tolerate a salad or i'd tolerate some spinach or or some what else just lettuce or whatever but i i never sat there and went mm, this spinach tastes amazing yeah i never once you know I, I mean if it was covered with sauces and dressings and salt and all sorts of things so you you can't taste the spinach then it tastes great but you know on its own it tastes horrible it's not food Every plant contains toxins. It's not like we could just walk around outside and just start eating, you know, uh, eating, our, you know, just our plants that are growing in our garden or trees or stuff like that, right? We're not fucking mm. dinos dinosaurs. Mm. Um, every plant contains toxins. Some plants just are less toxic than others. And we bred them in certain ways to be less toxic. But that doesn't mean that they're not toxic, right? Hmm caterpillar produce more of chemicals that are going to deter those caterpillars but can actually help us fight diseases like cancer so what does he say to eat instead what's the food here well he goes through his dietary history a bit um the way i came to a, a the way of eating that i do which is really just meat and water is 22 years ago when i was taking cancer biology at the university of washington in seattle we went over how plants use defense chemicals Yes, he eats an all meat diet and just wait because this gets good with his reasoning. We were looking at this from a cancer perspective, so we were looking at carcin carcinogens. And we learned 20 years ago that Brussels sprouts alone had over 136 identified human carcinogens in them. So because of my fear of cancer, I have decided to make my diet entirely of a class 2A carcinogen according to the W. Yeah. Of red How, and the, 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 And this, it's classed as a carcinogen, but that's based on 
epidemiology and how that observational observational about, yeah. studies that include self-reported kind of right where 30 something percent of americans are eating fast food every day fast food burgers mm. they're doing observational studies on these people that are eating buns and ketchup and you know drinking beer and diet coke and french fries with yeah. their burgers and uh they're poor populations um and whereas vegan populations are much more affluent and have a lot more money which is proven mm -hmm. and uh so they have a healthy healthy user bias i mean this is all nonsense first off red meat um they didn't prove as a carcinogen at all processed meat i mean i think anything processed could potentially be carcinogenic mm -hmm. um i'm not a huge proponent of eating you know just like grocery store bacon myself mm -hmm but teach their own. I don't, I don't really care what you eat, but, um, I mean the food that, again, that we've evolved on is carcinogenic. We are the only outlier in the animal kingdom that have been killing ourselves on the food that we've evolved on. So, mm. you know, it's like, it's like feeding, uh, it's like feeding chickens Doritos and saying, well, we have a, a one week study showing that chickens had better blood mark <sighs> better blood markers on an all Dorito diet than an all insect diet. So their therefore LDL Doritos, was so low. Their LDL was so low because it was orange even. Because LDL cholesterol is bad for you. Right? <laughs> it was orange, yeah. So <laughs> this is this is so stupid. In fact, what cancer does feed on, Mike, is it feeds on glucose and glutamine which has been proven metabolic therapy, metabolic, uh, 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 it's a metabolic disease. And, um, so if you want to increase your odds of getting cancer, you should be eating a plant-based diet, which includes, which is high in carbohydrates. Hmm. Cause that's what cancer feeds off of. People go on all meat diets to cure their cancer. Freddie Vard went on an all steak diet pretty much. Um, a lot of people I've spoken to in the cancer world uh, have gone mostly meat-based and a high-fat version of it. So pretty much just only eating saturated fat. And they've cured and treated colon cancer this way, which is one diet that meat is supposed to cause cancer for. Um, mm -hmm. I Again, check out my video with Freddie Vard on my channel. Stage three colon cancer is eating one ribeye a day. So... And these people, these people who have done, I, in fact, I did an interview with a woman just yesterday. I'm going to post that. She cured her end, endometrial cancer by eating a mostly high fat meat-based diet. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, you know, she, she's doing great. She's doing great. So she has nothing to sell. She doesn't have any books to sell. She's not a coach of any kind. You know, where are the where are the corporate interests with these guys? They speak of the uh, what? Sorry, what uh, organization was this again? World Health Organization. World Health, yeah, yeah. WHO, which is of course red meat. Yeah, this really sound logic. You know, he goes a little bit more into this research in a second, but he never really shows a list of these super freaky carcinogens, just hundreds of them. But also spinach, kale, lettuce, celery, cabbage, cucumber, broccoli, literally given pages and pages of every plant that you've ever come across in the grocery store. And not a single one had less than 60 known human carcinogens in them. And he mentions a lot of cruciferous vegetables and hey, they must just riddle your body with tumors with the 60. Yeah, well, a lot of them do because they're super inflammatory. The oxalates, lectins, fiber, they riddle your body with inflammation. When I cut mm -hmm. oxalates out of my diet, my 22 years of chronic pelvic pain syndrome went away. 22 years I had chronic pelvic pain syndrome from drinking spinach smoothies. This stuff gives people prostate cancer. Spinach will give you prostate cancer. Spinach will give you cancer, will give you bladder cancer because it inflames the hell out of these different organs because you're flooding your body with these microcrystal, microcrystals, especially if you have leaky gut and you absorb them at such high rates, right? Hmm. It's crazy. 
50 plus carcinogens in them each. Well, let's look to the actual research on cruciferous vegetables and cancer. Oh my God, this one from the Annals of Oncology is about cruciferous vegetables and cancer. I'm worried, but weird. Once a week versus almost no consumption of these cruciferous vegetables was associated with a 10 to 30% lower odds of this massive list. Right, I think I think we're done with this. Well, what does that have to do with anything? You found an association mm. that people eat more plants. Well, people eat more plants or generally tend to live healthier lifestyles right? because they exercise more. Again, they're in uh, in uh, more affluent uh, communities. They have more money. They have more money for healthcare. Um, less likely to be eating junk food. Less likely to be eating junk food. Exactly. So, if you're on a vegan diet, you're less likely to be eating. McDonald's hamburgers with Coke and French fries and going to barbecues on the weekend and eating cake with it and all this crap that goes along with that. Like I said, a huge portion of Americans eat fast food on a daily basis. And what does that fast, fast food comprise of? It's mostly meat-based, but there's so mm. much shit that goes along with it. It's not that yeah. it's not the chicken at KFC that's killing you. It's the breading on it. Right? Yeah, it's and, the... It's the ketchup on the hamburger. It's the exactly, you know, it, exactly it's all the junk. Mm. Exactly. They and uh, if they were doing these studies on pure carnivores, they would find none of this. And we've seen this in many societies, like we spoke of the Maasai, the Hadza. You know, that eat more traditional diets. Aboriginal communities that eat traditional diets, mm. and they have virtually zero risk of cancer. You know, it's when they deviate that and they start introducing seed oils and candy and all this bullshit that they start getting cancer, you know? Hmm. So, yeah, it's sad. It's sad what we've, what we've come to. Yeah, it's, it's sad that, uh, you know, people are so willing to jump on the bandwagon and uh, promote carbohydrates the way they do. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think is like the, been the best thing about you going on a carnivore diet in terms of you rethinking some of this stuff and you know being more critical? the The best thing for me really is uh, uh, the best thing physically for me is feeling better than I have my whole life. Like feeling like I've got more energy than I have my whole life, thinking more clearly, that kind of thing. But, um, but it's also helped me. Well, one of the good things that's come out of it is it's helped me more critically look at what's happening around me. Yeah. And all the, all the wh whether it's looking at the ingredients in a particular foods or, yeah, looking at the corruption that goes on, just it's much easier to stand back and go, yeah, I I always thought that was a good thing, but it's not. Yeah. I always I, thought they had my best interests at heart, but they don't. Yeah. And I, I always used to be that person that thought eating, like I was proud of myself for only eating red meat once a month, you know? Mm. The fact is I ate red meat three times a day, every day for 400 and 56 days in a row and since that time in the last year and a half since then i've been probably eating about 90 percent meat i've mm. eaten more more red meat in the last three years than people do in an entire lifetime and i'm sure you have as well mm. and you've seen nothing but health benefits from it yeah and but uh they will try and scare you as much as possible into not doing that. Like, oh, it's all just going to sit in your colon and rot and you're never yeah, going to get yeah. rid of it. And yeah, uh, unlike those fermentable carbohydrates, which don't sit in I, your exactly. colon and rot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so stupid. You know, mm. I'm not saying that the carnivore diet's for everybody, but I just don't like these. I mean, it's it's rooted in so much bullshit. You know, the sugar industry the vegetable oil, you know, it started with like Crisco vilifying saturated fat then the sugar industry. Um, the, the fact is there's no money to be made on meat fat. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what happened. The corporate interests got involved and now they're trying to tell us that sunflower oil, something we've never consumed. That's, 
you know, come with all these solvents and oxidizes and unstable. That's what we should be eating, this unnatural cheap shit that they put in a bottle, ship around the world. And then they also try to convince you that that's good for the environment. Hmm. It's good for your health. It's good for the environment. It's good for animals that they package this stuff in heavy bottles, ship it all around the world. You know how I get my cooking oil? I render oh. down. I render down fat. Ah, uh, yeah. I take that leftover fat and put it in a jar. Doesn't cost me a cent. Mm. And it stays good forever. So the scary thing, actually, is they, you know, convincing you that it's good for you and that it's environmentally sustainable. The scary thing is they've been able to convince militant militant environmentalists and militant vegans that that is environmentally sustainable and healthy yeah yeah that's crazy you know? it's just yeah. like it's as if they just turned off their brain they're so entrenched in ideology that any sort of logic that any normal person with two brain cells could think of just goes mm. completely out the window mm. Yeah, I, as we touched on um, already, the critical thinking is just, it doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't exist. So mm. the fact that you could tell somebody that something we've never eaten before, that they have to deodorize and, you know, put into a vat of petroleum. <laughs> and bleach. Bleach it. So it's deodorize not a... It. Bleach it and deodorize it so it's, uh, you know, visually and odorly acceptable. Acceptable. Package it into heavy bottles. Ship it around the world. That that's better for you than something we've always evolved and, on. And, and say, keep it in the dark because it's going to be unstable if it gets <laughs> too much light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you keep your tallow in the dark? No, I, you know what I, I used to do, I used to, well, just it is, my, but yeah, <laughs> I used to just have my tallow. Like I said, I'd pour it from the frying pan into a jar and just leave that mm. on the counter and it would stay good for ah. weeks. If you yeah, put in the that's... fridge, it'll stay good for months. If you put in the freezer, it'll mm. stay good forever. You know, no, there's no money. Mm. There's no money involved. Nothing. It's all free. Yeah. So why do you think they would demonize that? Huh? Maybe I wonder. They they can't make, yeah, they can't make money on it. Yeah. Right. So let's, let's, let's process these shitty oils. Um, there's actually one oil. I think it's, uh, is it cottonseed oil that makes people infertile? The Chinese were making people infertile with it. And they actually have a warning, oh, wow. a fertility warning label on their products. It has some sort of chemical in it that makes people infertile. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, not the stuff you want to be ingesting. No, no. So yeah. these people are just, they talk about the beef and dairy industry. They're completely corporate puppets. They're big pharma puppets mm. that own these uh, plant-based, uh, you know, agriculture, chemical companies and uh, like Monsanto, Syngenta, um, you know, Bayer, um, Bayer owns Monsanto and Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other ones out there. Chem China have a lot of plant-based interests and agrochemical companies and all this and all that. So yeah, it's uh it's really terrible. It, it, it's kind of, uh, and things have turned themselves on the head, right? Because years ago, the people that would have been vegan or the people that would have been thinking about, you know, not eating meat or whatever it happens to be or environmental issues would not have been supporting companies like pharmaceutical companies and uh you know big food and stuff like that yeah but it's yeah. just uh those companies have worked out a, a really good way of talking to the people that would previously have been against them yeah well it's Work like out uh, the way to talk to them get them on our side and then uh, we can do what we need to yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that anyone in the right mind could think of Beyond Meat Burger, which has like 25 different ingredients shipped from all around the world, is better for animal welfare, the environment, and your health 
as opposed to just beef, you know, especially mm. regeneratively raised animals that, uh, that actually are carbon neutral and actually sequester carbon in the soil and actually help mm. the environment. We need cow shit. We need animals to be shitting on our land to fertilize the soil. Mm. You know, that's what's helping the environment. Not not using mung bean protein and canola oil <sighs> as, subs, as substitutes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so silly. Yeah. Anyways, we got more of these videos to come, guys. Me and Dave, we're going to be doing this every single week, right, Dave? Yep, we will definitely do it. Every week. Hopefully my voice will come back. Um, Dave, where can we find you? Um, people can uh, type in at zero carb into YouTube and uh, my channel will come up. That's no called no, no carb. carb Life. No Carb Life. I love it. Mm. You guys need to check out Jay Dave's channel. His videos are so much fun. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll get back to you soon.